give you a little example and we're gonna go through the stages of sound work. I have the piece by uh, Peter Tchaikovsky and it's uh, coming from his uh, wonderful cycle, The Seasons. And the piece is April or Snowdrop. So Tchaikovsky was born in 1840. And we know that romantic period lasted from about um, 1820 until uh, 20th century, uh, basically. So that makes Tchaikovsky a romantic composer. And, you know, sometimes, for example, with the Rachmaninoff, it's a very interesting case because he was born in 1873 and he died in 1943. So which actually puts him already in the 20th, 20th century music, modern music. But because of his style, uh, we still think that he is a romantic composer and his music is just doesn't have that language of the modern music. So, yes, the dates are very important, but then you also need to ask yourself whether it is romantic period or not. Or not. With Tchaikovsky, it's actually very clear. Yes, it is a romantic period um, of Russian music. Why do we need to know um, about the actual period? Because romantic period, for example, suggests uh, a totally different uh, style of music, a totally different expression. There's a lot of pedal that we use in romantic music. Um, it uh, have a lot more freedom. It is more expressive. It's more intimate. It's basically um, the talk from heart to heart, not so much reasoning, like, uh, for example, in classical music or Baroque music, but it's really about humans' emotion. That's what at the core of romantic music. And we will be able to um, hear that in Tchaikovsky's music for sure. Let me remind you how this piece, April, Snowdrop, sound like. to our plan. We will talk about the actual meaning of the work and then materialization of it and what should we do with the sound. So uh, the piece has a very lyrical um, character. So the piece is called April and as I mentioned before when we have a title of the piece it's really hard to imagine something else. Um, so it is April and snowdrop, right? Snowdrop is those beautiful flowers that comes out first um, in the spring. Um, so besides imagining the April, the time of the year, and this beautiful flower, let's uh, also try to go a little bit deeper and think about what it can possibly symbolize. Maybe it's the beginning of something new, right? Maybe it's this the feeling of anticipation. Maybe the feeling of hope. And when we know that something wonderful uh, can happen in the future, or we hope it can happen. So let's look into how this is materializes in the music, right? Look, the actual melody that we're gonna listen for, is always ascending. And it keeps uh, climbing even higher. And then three times he repeats this intonation. It, it is so, so beautiful. The melody is climbing up. Another thing that I want to point out uh, when, when we analyze, right, how the image is materializes in the music is that it goes step by step. Look at that. And only occasionally you have a skip, right? So it's very uh, gentle way of um, building the phrase. You don't have a big, aggressive and confident lips. It's just step by step. So it's, it's very, it's very naive and very gentle. This is how it unfolds. Another evidence that uh, works for this um, gentle char character, that it starts from the pickup, right? It doesn't start right on the first strong beat. It starts with this um, eighth note with the F. 
melody that kind of gently invites the main melody. Again, um, it, it sounds very fragile, very gentle. Another interesting thing, if you look into the left hand, that, and actually there are a lot of um, uh, answers that can be found in the left hand or whichever hand is playing the accompaniment, right? Whatever is accompanying the melody. In the left hand, we don't have a strong beat. So the time signature is 6, 8, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So he could actually write it like this, for example. The character will be absolutely different because we already have something that is confident and starts on a beat one, but he doesn't do it. On a beat one in this particular piece, there is a rest. And so this first beat will actually not be present until the next section. So the first big section A is going to be um, strong beat less. So there will be not a, a single uh, beat one. So again, it suggests a very gentle and very timid character on the piece. Now let's move to the third part. How do we need to play it? If I already know, okay, here's my character, here how it's materialized, then I will be very careful with um, hearing the sound that I want, right, using my subjective ear and then objective ear, hearing what actually I am producing. So if I play with a sound that is too, too strong, for example, it's not good, right? It just, there's too much confidence in it, right? So I have to find something that is more, um, a lot more thin maybe. Although this is the sound, uh, since we need to create a sustenuto, right? Sustained melody. This is the sound that we still play into the keyboard, even though it's piano. Right? Because if I use the sound leggero out, like this, right, it suddenly stops singing, right? And in a lot of times in Tchaikovsky music, um, a lot of his pieces have this very vocal nature. It really comes from uh, trying to imitate a human voice. So I need to make sure I play very gently, right, with anticipation with all those beautiful features that we discussed in terms of character, but I have to choose a sound that sings. What else I'm going to look into when I do my sound work and work on each hand separately? I'm going to look into the phrasing, right, so the phrase needs to have a beginning, it needs to develop and then it needs to end. New phrase. And then this little climax. This part almost, uh, it just reminds me, maybe when you dream about something and you just say, how I wish for this to be true or how I wish for this to, to happen, right? And again, it's not like you figure out the character once you talked about it. You need to kind of discover and unfold it step by step as the piece goes, right? Because this is one type of expression. This is different, right? It's more passionate, more with some kind of urge um, inside of us. Let's fast forward a little bit and talk about uh, a different section of this piece. Again, it's not uh, that the image is going to just stay static and not change. We need to see how the piece unfolds and maybe there will be a section in it that will suggest a different character, like in this table. So this is uh, section B. different character, right? Music, first of all, moves to minor key, right? Our beginning was in beautiful B flat major. Now we moved into D minor. 
So of course, it suggests already um, a, a, a more sorrowful uh, character. And the, basically what we have in this section is actually the phrase that always repeats multiple times. And that phrase consists of two ideas. This is the first one. Maybe uh, you ask or beg someone, right? Uh, there could be different interpretation of this uh, melody, but it's, it's very sad, right? And the second is more brisk and more just like, a, um, you know, more dreamy, more graceful. And in terms of the sound, I choose the in sound for the first uh, part of the uh, of the phrase right here, where I need to sing sustenuto in the key. Of and for this, for the second half, the upper half, right? I need to really light leggero out of the key of sound. And again, it the constantly going to change one measure in one measure out one measure in one measure out in the next section um, the music again change um, uh, its face so it becomes a lot more passionate when all my emotions are um, oh, very hot they all very heated right here Combination when I need to go into the keyboard, when I need to be more emotional, more outspoken, and then this is leggero. And again, continuous. And you see, eventually, my hand will be trained um, and trained by my ear to immediately recognize, okay, this is this type of sound, right? Sustained and prolonged, and this is totally different. You can compare it to, say, this is singing, right? Singing, and this is speaking. Very informative. Again, singing and speaking. If I mix them up, for example, I play everything in one tone, look how it will sound. If you have something is missing, right? If something is a bit of too much, right here, it sounds so much better. And a lot of times, actually, there is really not um, one size fits all. So it's either this type of sound or that type of sound. A lot of times you can simply decide what you prefer, what, what is your preference. The only thing that your rendition needs to be convincing. You need to be able to convince. And in general, play with good taste. So I hope that inspires you to keep working on your sound. And most importantly, understand that it starts from being conscious to what you play, listening very closely to yourself and um, understanding that your playing needs to be always meaningful and in short i want to recommend you to think of your playing as if this is me speaking so this is my speech it's not like i just play uh, you know some kind of random uh, combination of notes or not random combination of notes but i'm kind of distant from it it really is my speech so it really matters that i speak intelligibly right and i speak with meaning and with passion and with my own ideas and of course your ideas need to be paired with ideas of the composer so it's a very beautiful and a little bit mysterious um, union enjoy your practice bye bye